Hi, this is Robert, and I have been asked to lead week three's discussion on a book called Good to Great, Why Some Companies Make the Leap and Others Don't. It was written by Jim Collins in 2001, and this week's discussion focuses specifically on chapter two, which is what Collins refers to as being a level five leader. One of the things that I really like about Jim Collins and the way that he writes is that he introduces individuals to his storyline and how their personal journey and how their personal story affected how they became a level five leader. And throughout the uh, article, we are introduced to individuals and their companies and the decisions that they made that brought these good companies to greatness. So before we talk about a level five leader, let's talk about the five levels that uh, lead up to it essentially. Level one is an individual who is a hard worker. I like to point out that they are an individual that has skills and knowledge that are based on um, standards in the practice of the fields uh, of the company. A level two individual is a person who understands group objectives and works well with others. A level three individual is a person who is able to organize resources, time, and people. Jim likes to use the expression, get the right people on the bus in the right direction. A level four leader is someone who conveys a vision and not only is able to convey a vision, but can inspire others to also lead them. And at the top of the pyramid is our level five leader, who is able to demonstrate all levels below him, level four, three, two, and one. But what makes them different is that they're able to show results in an organization over long periods of time, and is able to do this by being humble, and also by having a strong resolve. And that's the discussion of today. So this is where Collins writes down essentially the equation. Humility plus will equals a level five leader. And in those two qualities, I like to put under humble that an individual who is humble is able to see individuals around them, not as the competition, but as their team, as someone who is able to foster those good work uh, behaviors and utilize their resources instead of trying to set up individuals such as their successor at, for failure. One of the things that Collins also points out is that just because an individual may be mild-mannered and humble, it doesn't mean that they aren't tough. Level 5 leaders are tough. They have to be able to fight off corporate takeovers. They have to be able to make tough decisions. But underneath of all of that, the most important aspect is that they're able to put the needs of the company before their own personal needs. So those are essentially the two sides of the level five leader. One of the interesting observations that Collins makes also is that when a company is thinking about change and when they want to turn things around, that companies that were great often look to individuals who were already then insiders, even if they were family members that inherited the position, opposed to companies that were not great often look for the uh, person with the cape to come in and save them. One of the attributes that good leaders often said is that they had a great deal of luck on their side that helped them get to where they needed to get. And Collins comes up with this um, sort of this rubric to explain uh, this phenomena of luck in which he calls the window and the mirror. The window is essentially the metaphor for looking out and the mirror 
is the metaphor for looking at oneself. Collins makes the observation that the level five leader is always looking out the window for good fortune, looking to his own company, his own employees, looking to the market forces to explain why things are going well. He also looks in the mirror at himself to understand why things are going wrong. The bad leader, on the other hand, always looks to the outside to explain why things are going badly, but always turns to himself when things are looking good. And I think that this is an interesting contrast. I won't go through each and every one of these bullet points because this is taken directly from chapter two of Good to Great. But I think that this provides that nice side-by-side -side example of the two forces that the level five leader uses. And one, once again, one of the things that Collins points out is that these two personalities seem to contrast each other. They are really at odds, but it is only when one can harness both of them that they can become a great leader. So one of the observations that I have made throughout reading this particular chapter is that Collins seems to place a lot of the shortcomings on poor leaders and how they are tied to uh, things such as cult of personality, large compensation such as golden parachutes and jet airliners for executives, and how those things really prevent leaders from rising to the top because they are always thinking of themselves before they are thinking about the needs of the company. So my question concerning chapter two is, is it easier for leaders in the nonprofit world to become level five leaders? Because many nonprofits are really aspiring to lofty goals, such as education, conservation, um, humanitarian work, Without those trappings that are connected to the business world, should it be easier for leaders and nonprofits to aspire to, to the level five leader, as Collins describes? I'd like to thank everybody for watching this presentation, and I look forward to the discussions and the points that are brought up throughout the uh, week. Thank you very much.